Good morning, grade A. Still my students. He's only three here. We have Greg, Tisha, and Kalina. The rest are absent. All right, it's okay. Again, I will not force you to, um, to join us in our class, but then again, there's a need for you to join. Why? Because we'll be discussing important matters. Last meeting, we had just discussed, again, the um, we had just discussed the monohybrid crossbreed. Okay. We are still in the fourth quarter, module one, weeks one to four, cell division and genetics. Last meeting, we had a discussion about the monohybrid cross. Okay. For today, as what I had promised, I'll be giving you examples for your learning resource material. Okay. Again, let me reiterate what we had just discussed, what we had agreed upon with your project, the learning resource material. You need to make a learning resource material out of the topic in the fourth quarter, weeks one to four, entitled Cell Division and Genetics. All right. So your project has two main categories or types. We have digital output and physical output. For the digital output, it is um, not limited to blogging and video documentaries narrated by you, okay? For physical output, it includes but not limited to AD of the science concept, number one. Number two, miniature of the science concept, it could be. Number three, it could be a diorama of the science concept or the science concept itself, right? The deadline for this is May 13, 2022 at 5 p.m. Philippine time. So again, I'll be giving you examples pertaining to the digital output, okay? The video documentaries and the blogging, okay? Let me share this to the class. This is actually the output of grade 10 last school year. Okay, for blogging, let's have this from Belosa. Hold on. Let me share this to the class. Okay. Hello, everybody. It's me, Kaylee Maxine Velasa, and for today, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic gas laws. Let's start fresh. What are gas laws? Well, gas laws are examples of scientific laws. These are statements that describe, summarize, and predict a range of natural phenomena by means of repeated experiments and observations. Gas laws are laws that relate variables pressure, temperature, volume, and amount mathematically in order to make predictions about gas behavior, which is given in the kinetic molecular theory. Now, let me briefly introduce to you the gas laws and some of their real-life applications. Formulated by Robert Boyle in the year 1662, this law describes the relationship between volume and pressure, claiming that the two variables are inversely proportional, which means that when the exerted pressure of a gas increases, the volume it occupies decreases, given that the temperature and amount is held constant. So when one goes up, the other goes down. Deep sea creatures are unlikely to survive on the surface of the waters because they are used to high pressure. Once they are brought up, decrease of pressure allows the gases in their bodies to expand, causing their air bladder and cells to rupture. Charles' Law, proposed by Jacques Charles in 1802. Given that the pressure is held constant, a gas's absolute temperature and the volume it occupies is in direct proportion, which means that what happens with one variable also happens to the other. 
an increase of temperature causes a corresponding increase of volume. This law can be applied to baking. If you want your bread and cake spongy and soft, you would need yeast. Yeast is a leavening agent that converts sugars in the dough to carbon dioxide. Once the dough is put into the oven and baked in high temperature, the dough's gas expands, resulting to a spongy soft appearance for your pastry. The relationship of the temperature and the pressure of a gas is described in a Montan's law, discovered by Guillermo Montan's in the late 1600s. Just like the previous law, this law also describes a direct proportion relationship. When the temperature of a gas increases, while the volume is held constant, it causes the pressure to increase too. He discovered this while building an air thermometer. According to a Montan's law, higher temperature results in higher pressure. The air pressure in tires increases as the temperature rises. Driving excessively raises the temperature of the air in the tires. Doing that, especially in this hot weather, may blow up your tires due to overinflation. Better get your tires checked to avoid risky scenarios. A pressure cooker is a cooking device that cooks food quickly. While the food is being heated inside, its fixed volume container traps the steam being generated. And as steam builds up, the pressure increases. This law is simply a combination of the three primary laws we just tackled. There are specific events that involve the variables temperature, volume, and pressure. Hence, requiring a combination of the three laws caused the discovery of the combined gas law. Our lungs are the containers that hold air. As swimmers dive in the depths, they make sure that they know how to adjust to maintain proper pressure balance between their lungs and the water. Because the water pressure increases, and like stated in Boyle's law, volume will decrease. And applying Charles' law, diving in cold waters may squeeze your lungs until there's no air left for you to breathe. Same goes with diving on a warm weather. The volume of air in your lungs may expand quickly. Without exhaling, the air will build up inside. Proposed by Amadeo Avogadro in the year 1811, this law states that under the same temperature and pressure, equal volumes contain an equal amount of molecules. When blowing up balloons, the volume increases as you release gas particles into the balloon from your lungs. The balloon's volume will expand as you force more gas particles to it. Just like the combined gas law, but the Avogadro's law is added. Scientists wanted to study the relation of gas molecules to its environment. But upon brainstorming for a deep, perfect equation, there are always affecting factors such as intermolecular forces. So, they just came up with this gas equation to study gas behavior, despite some minor factors. Airbags installed in cars is controlled by a sensor that detects a crash. When the car crashes, the controller alerts the system, triggering an inflator that burns chemicals such as sodium azide very rapidly to produce large volumes of gas to inflate the airbag. While this happens, the bag is also being compressed when deployed, decreasing its volume, resulting to its pressure to rise. However, the gases are being neutralized to prevent the bags to overinflate. And seconds later, after the deployment, the bags will start to deflate in order for you to get out of the car. Lastly, we have the Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, discovered by John Dalton in 1801. This law states that the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases. This law is especially applied to atmospheric studies. The atmosphere is made up of gases, mainly nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Put together all the partial pressures of these individual gases, we get the total atmospheric pressure. Now you know the basic concepts and applications of these gas laws. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. And I hope you understand the importance of these laws. Studying gas laws are important simply because these gas laws apply to our everyday lives. You may not realize the things you feel, see, hear, and smell can be explained by gas laws. These can even save your life. Till next time! Alright, that is actually one example of the blogging under digital output. Let's have the um, video documentary, okay? This is one good example of a video documentary. Hold on, let me share my screen.
Over the centuries, experts have been studying something that is unseen in our naked eyes, and that is gas. And since it is different from all visible things, studying this element is more difficult. For that reason, scientists came up with some things that are helpful for them to study gas itself, and those are the gas laws. Additionally, there were plenty of experts who have formulated their own gas laws, and each gas law has their own uses. However, how can we apply this in our daily lives? Let's find out in this video. This is Christian Inario, and you're watching Science Matters. Studying science is interesting, and this makes us formulate a lot of questions. For this topic, we tend to ask, what are the applications of these laws in our daily lives? To begin with, we will talk about the Boyle's Law. This describes how the pressure of the gas tends to increase as the volume of the container decreases. According to the rule, if the volume is large, the pressure is low because the particles cannot move quickly because they must move in a large container. On the other hand, if the volume is small, the pressure is high because the particles must move in a smaller container. You can observe a real life application of Boyle's Law when you feel your vehicle tire. As you push air into the tire, the increasing pressure reduces the volume of the air molecules by packing them together. The pressure in the pump has to always be higher than that which is inside the tire in order for more air to be pushed in. As the air temperature is more or less constant in that period of time, you can see a real life example of Boyle's Law occurring in front of you. We are down to our next law, and that is Charles' Law. This law describes how gases tend to expand when heated. According to the law of Charles, volume and temperature are directly proportional to each other. A real-life application of Charles' Law would be your vehicle tire. If you read your owner's manual carefully, it will mention that tire pressure should always be measured cold. That's because driving around heats up tires. Charles Law states that the gas should always occupy more space when heated, but the tire does not expand very much. This causes the tire pressure to be higher when warm. Consequently, measuring tire pressure when the tire is warm will give you the false impression that you have filled your tires with too much air. Now, we are going to discuss our third gas law, and that is the Avogadro's Law. According to this law, the same amount of gases at the same temperature and pressure emit the same number of molecules, regardless of their chemical and physical properties. In other words, as temperature and pressure remain constant, the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the number of gas moles. The real life evidence of this law is whenever you blow up a balloon. The volume of the balloon increases as you add moles of gas to the balloon by blowing it up. Basically speaking, the more moles, the larger the volume will become. Now, we are in a Monton's Law. This law states that the pressure of an ideal gas varies directly with the absolute temperature when the volume of the sample is held constant. This means that lower temperature means lower pressure, and higher temperature means higher pressure. A real-life example of this is your vehicle tire. In hot summer days, the inflated tires of vehicles may burst. The bursting of tires is caused by a Monton's Law. The inflated tires are under high pressure. When the temperature of the air rises, the pressure of the gas in the tubes also increases. After an unbearable point, the tires fracture. However, what makes gas law important? Actually, gas law makes the studying of gases much easier. They can be used to determine the parameters of a mass of gas using theoretical means. For that reason, these said gas laws are truly of great importance, and I do believe that they are useful when studying the things that are not seen. Remember, there are still gas laws out there not being mentioned here. For that reason, I encourage you to do your research and be limitless. This has been Christian Inario, and always remember that science matters.
Alright? So, those are the examples of um, your digital outputs. So, hopefully, you organize already your thought, your concepts um, in, for your project since the submission of this is May 13th. Okay? May 13th, 2020 at 5 p.m. Alright? Do you have any question in regards to your project? Do you have any question? All right. Please inform your classmates that we will have a discussion, a continue, uh, a, a continue with the topic, a continuation of the discussion with regards to the monohybrid. And next, we'll be jumping to the next topic, which is the dihybrid. Okay. Let's have the monohybrid continuation by next meeting, hopefully. We can have more examples. You can request more examples if you want. We'll be discussing that one, the phenotypic and the genotypic ratios. Right? Questions so far? All right. I think that will be all for today, class. Thank you for your participation. Let me record your attendance. Greg Ramirez, Kalina, and Tisha, your attendance are already recorded. Have a nice day, grade eight. Take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of the day.